Welcome to the Fundamentals of Surveying Q&A Review 2020, question number four. The FS examiners are such tricksters sometimes because they love to combine concepts into a single question. So if you can combine two or three concepts into one question, gosh, you've just killed like three birds with one stone. That's amazing. And that's exactly what we're going to see today. Now, here's the thing. If you don't know one of the two concepts, you are going to get zero points on a question like this. So it's all or nothing. Ante up and let's see how you do. The call of the question says, a specific purpose survey is ordered by a longtime client. He asks you to, quote, compute the surface area of the land and the water on his side of the river. Now, what does that really mean? It's basically saying, how many square feet does he have on land? How many square feet does he have under the water? And what is the total size of his holding? But we're not asking to do that. It says here, select the lines that best describe that request. And here is the diagram you've got to work with. The diagram shows that we've got several lines here. We got two lines in the water. We got two lines on his side of the shoreline. And you've got to pick one line in the water. And you got to pick one line on the shore. And that sort of separates the center of the river from the shoreline of the river from the property boundary of Joe Blow. Now, here's the, here's the thing. You're not really sure exactly where any of those lines begin or end because you have multiple options. So if you're in the real world, what you're actually looking at is a blank canvas. And you, the surveyor, have to look at the abstract, what you're looking at right now, and you have to draw your lines, draw your boundary lines, whatever else you're going to draw, and give the survey to the client in the form of lines and bearings and distances and stuff. So the real question here is, where are you going to draw those lines? And before we can really answer that question, we've got to go to the sources, because guessing is not going to get you very far. When I think of sources, and I see the word, well, first of all, I see the word meander and my mind immediately goes to the BLM manual. I see some water, my mind immediately goes to the manual. Now, is this a public land or not? Well, I think this is a public land area because you've got an old survey and you have the word meander, but let's see where it takes us. But before we go into our BLM manual, Let's also go into Brown's because Brown's is, has a great water boundaries chapter. And I think that Brown's is going to shed a lot of light on the questions we have today. So I open up my copy of Brown's and I just start meandering around the pages. Well, let's see what it says. Number one, from the earliest times, meander lines were run to determine the location and the area, ding, 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 of rivers and lakes. This is sounding promising. Charges were made for dry land acreage only. Therefore, meander lines were run to determine the area to be charged. Are you seeing a similarity here, guys? Dry area land versus wet area water. This is exactly what your client is asking for. And finally, in most instances, meander lines do not control boundaries, but they do control area. So here we go again. Did your client ask you to find the boundary between the river and the dry land? Or did he ask you to find the area? He asked you to find the area. This meander line is, is man, it's going to be the winner. Okay. So I've got the dry land versus riverside. I think the answer is going to be a meander. But now we come to the center of the river. And as you saw before, we had two options, the medial line and the thalweg. 
The medial line, otherwise known as the thread of a stream, is usually defined as a line equidistant from the two banks of the stream. On the other hand, the thalweg is the deepest part channel of the stream. So am I going to use the channel or am I going to use the thread or medial line? Based on this, I think I'm going to use the thread. After we've gone through Brown's, which was, gosh, like the best source for the past three questions we've had on this series, now we come time to talk about the BLM manual. And the BLM manual has an entire chapter on meander lines and water boundaries. So let's read what the BLM manual of 2009 has to say. The traverse that approximates the margin of waters is termed a meander line. The original survey of water boundaries described the condition as they existed as the date of survey. This meander line made by the surveyors in 1872 was valid as of 1872, but the process is only presumed accurate at the date of the survey and future changes are expected. So if future changes are expected, the meander line will change. And finally, a meander line is not normally surveyed as a boundary, but only a representation of the boundary, which is, quote, the upper limit of the water body. Gosh, we've gone through three small pieces of two great books, and I think I really think this is going to be enough to solve our problem. So first of all, what is going to be the approximate line of demarcation along the shoreline? Am I going to use the line as of 200 years ago, or am I going to use the actual meander line shown as of today? Pretend like you surveyed it. I'm going to use the actual line of today the meander line as of 2020, and then going to the center of the stream. Am I going to demarcate the boundary between the owner and the neighbor at the thread medial line? Or am I going to demarcate the line at the thread, the deepest part of the channel? Well, from Brown's, he says use the thread. So guess what, folks? We're using the thread. Answer number one, meander line as of today. Answer number two, thread of the river, medial line. And that's all, folks. Just that easy. Keep those copies of Brown's and BLA manual on your bookshelves, and you better be reading them.